Hi guys, today we're going to be reading Front Desk Chapter 10. If you have the book, please use it. Two days later, the new washing machine arrived. While my dad and I were working, as did an unexpected guest. A guest. Uncle Ming. Uncle Ming wasn't really my uncle. That's just That was just what we, we called friend family in China. Family friends in China. But he had work in the same hot, sweaty kitchen as my dad last year. And we hadn't seen him seen them then. Seen him since then. How he managed to drive himself to the Calabista, I had no idea. But because smoke was coming out from the hood of his car when he arrived, and the bumper was falling off, and Mr. Uncle Ming himself actually looked worse than his car. He had a swollen back, black eye and bruises all over his cheek and neck. What happened to you? My dad asked, rushing over to help his wounded friend inside. He led Uncle Ming to the, into the kitchen. Uncle Ming winced as he slid into the chair, like it even hurt to sit. It's a long story, he said, his thick banging accent made me feel like I was back home. He lifted his puppy eye and peered at my dad. It's good to see you, old friend. My dad gave Uncle Ming a hug while I took out his things and put them inside one of the guest, room, guest rooms. Room one, the nicest one. When I got back, the two were deep in the conversation, talking about sharks of all things. That this that was weird. I didn't want to disturb them, so I stood in the corridor listening. But why, Min, Ming? Why did you go to the loan sharks? My dad said, asked. I wasn't planning on it, but when then I lost my job. Uncle Ming said, and a hundred dollars turned into five hundred dollars. And before I knew it, how how much do you owe them? Five thousand dollars. Uncle Ming said. His voice cracked as he said the number. My dad said a swear word in Chinese. What do I do, buddy? They're going to kill me if I don't pay up. Uncle me cried. I gasped at the word kill. They both looked up at me and immediately dropped the subject. They didn't bring up the sharks or lumps again the whole evening. They didn't. That didn't stop me from thinking about it, though. After dinner, my, while my parents and Uncle Ming re, re about China, I slipped out the back door. Hank wasn't in his room, but Billy Bob's lights were on. I peered inside and saw that the weeklies were just starting another game of Monopoly. Mia! They exclaimed when Billy Bob opened his door. Come and join us. I grinned. I love Monopoly. Can I be the hat? I asked him, plopping down on Billy Bob's bed. The hat in Monopoly looked nice. It looked like the rich rich man's hat. The shoe, on the other hand, looked like the poor man's shoe. And you can be whatever you want, Billy Bob said, handing me the hat. He, he selected the race car from herself and the iron for Hank. Fred picked the wheelbarrow. Quickly, we set up the game. Billy Bob and Fred made me the bank. As we played, I turned to Hank and asked him if he knew anything about the long shark. The long sharks. Oh, that's nothing you want to get involved with, he said. No, sir. No, sir. You want to stay as far away as you can from that rabbit hole, he exclaimed. He explained the, that the loan sharks were someone who loaned people money with high interest. What's interest? I asked him. Interest is like a fee you pay the person for borrowing money. So, like, if you want to borrow ten dollars from me, I would say okay, but you gotta give twelve dollars back. Otherwise, otherwise, what do you get out of it? So, the, that two dollars is interest, he said. But the a loan shark. Billy Bob jumped in. A low shark doesn't want $12 back. He wants $20 back or even $50. $50, I asked. What kind of people would agree to that? Desperate people. 
Hank said. People who can't get loans anywhere else. And what happens if they don't pay back? Hank sucked in the air. You don't want to know, he said. I'll, I turned to Fred. They'll come after you and find you. They'll come and find you, Fred said. Beat you up or worse. I felt myself go cold. Just then, Hank let out a squeal. Hot diggity dog! Will you look at that? I am, I now own Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Avenue and a place park. Hank howled with glee. Pay on Nia, that'll be $50 a night. I handed him $50. Hank took the Monopoly money and kissed it. Someday, Nia, he said softly, someday. Someday what? Billy Bob said, chuckling. You'll really own... You'll really own Pennsylvania Avenue and Place Park. Hey, it can really happen. If it can happen in Monopoly, why can't it happen in real life? Hank insisted. Isn't that right, Mia? I looked at Hank. I, I had a feeling that he was just trying to make me feel good. But I saw a... I saw... I thought I saw a glimmer of hope in his eyes too, right? I quickly said. If you want to see chapter 11, make sure to check that out the next video. Bye!